I think now I will turn to to Mr. Paul Mite, Honorable Paul Mite, and uh, politicians have generally been demonized in this country you know, as being probably the problem, the biggest problem for this country. I think it would be good to hear from his perspective. So, Mite, welcome. The first observation I'd like to make is that under the old constitution that we got rid of on the 27th of August, uh, last year. Political parties did not have special treatment under that old constitution. In fact, there were societies and they used to be registered like any other society under the Societies Act. The new constitution changed all that. And although I know that uh, most of you went through uh, this uh, draft constitution before it came, the new constitution of Kenya, permit me <coughs> to draw your attention to Articles 91 and 92. It's part three, and the heading is political parties. It is important. Article 91, sub Article 2 of the new constitution says, and I quote, a political party shall not a be founded on a religious, linguistic, racial, and I pause to emphasize the next term, ethnic, or regionally, or be regionally, uh, regional based. Now that is a very profound requirement of the Constitution, that a political party shall not be ethnic and shall not be regionally based. And when we are talking about the media and the Kenyan people, what do we see on daily basis? People promoting political parties that we from this region must be in one political vehicle. On daily basis, this is the party for this region. This is, and no one is saying, by so doing, you are actually violating Article 91, sub Article 2A of the Constitution. It's a clear violation. So, talking about the media, and I'll be coming to it, that is one issue that the media needs to pick up, take up immediately. Of course, violation. Now, the other very brief article, the other article I'd like to refer to very briefly is Article 103 of the Constitution. And the heading of Article 103 is vacation of office of a member of parliament. Says the office of a member of parliament becomes vacant. There are a lot of other things there. But sub Article 3 says <coughs> that parliament shall enact legislation providing for the circumstances under which a member of a political party shall be deemed for the purposes of Clause 1E, to have resigned from his party. And if you look at uh, Sabbatical 1 uh, CE, it says, a member of parliament, uh, the, the, the office of a member of parliament becomes vacant if, having been elected to parliament as a member of a political party, the member resigns from that party or is deemed to have resigned from the party in accordance with the legislation uh, contemplated in, 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 in the sabbatical tree which I've read. <coughs> in other words, Parliament is required to enact legislation to provide for when a member of a political party can be deemed to have resigned from the party on whose ticket that member of Parliament went to, to Parliament. And you will see from the transitional provisions that the existing laws, the laws that we are in force before 27th of August, are preserved uh, under the new constitution. And therefore, when we were enacting this constitution in August, we had the Political Parties Act 2007 already in force, which is preserved as a law in force under uh, the 
transition of provisions. And if you read that, uh, that uh, Political Parties uh, Act of 07, it says in uh, section 17, subsection 3, a person shall not be a member of more than one political party at the same time. Sabbatical 4. A person who, while a, a member of a political party, A, forms another political party, B, joins in the formation of another political party, or C, joins another political party, or the, in any way or manner, publicly advocate for the formation of another political party, shall be deemed to have resigned from the previous political party. So it is the law that is deeming a member of parliament to have resigned. And you, if you went to parliament on the ticket of a particular political party, then you are deemed to have resigned from that party. And then you cease to be a member of parliament. And actually, section 17 is very similar to section 14 of the New Political Parties Act, which will come into force if it is uh, gazetted by the Minister for Constitutional Affairs on the 1st of November. But even before it comes into force, the old act is in place. And actually, the provisions are not materially different in this political part, in, in, in both the 07 Act and in the New York. What point am I making here? Impunity is about a law being brazenly violated, and you turn a blind eye, you pretend that uh, the law is not being valid. Now, it's not enough to read what the Constitution says or what the political party says. You need to go further and address your mind what is the rationale, why did the Constitution provide in this article what it has provided. What is the rationale for the political party is that providing what it has provided. And to me the rationale is very simple. For a long time, we have not had political parties in this country, properly so called. Time and again, you've heard of politicians talking of political parties. What is a political party? It's a vehicle to permit me to get into parliament. Now, that is not the constitutions, is not the political parties act understanding of a political party. Because stability in a country the rule of law, democracy is underpinned by strong political systems. Where parties are institutions founded on the basis of ideology and where parties are internally democratic but also where discipline is enforced within the political party. No one is forced to join a political party. But if you read the political parties uh, act carefully, it requires you, once you join, to give a notice if you want to vacate, uh, leave that political party. So if as a nation, as a country, you're going to have stability, the reason of the provisions in the constitution and in the political <coughs> parties act relating to the political parties is that there is an attempt to help grow political parties in this country as institutions. That is why people are required to observe discipline within political parties. A strong political party system underpins parliamentary democracy, underpins um, uh, uh, stability in this country. So time has come for Kenyans and politicians to stop regarding political parties as vehicles in the other countries, people vote for political parties on the basis of their ideology, on the basis of very specific issues. Like the citizens want to know in England, in the US, in all the other stable democracies, what is this party going to do to lower interest rates? Because that's always something very important to the citizen. Mortgage rates, what are you going to do? How are you going to reduce unemployment 
How are you going to manage agriculture? How are you going to manage health services? In terms of specifics, not just in terms of sort of empty rhetoric. And one hopes that you are going to move forward to that level where instead of a politician saying, I'm from this ethnic community, elect me. You interrogate the party. What is the party saying is going to do for you, not for the politician. Now, ethnicity has been a cancer in this country and continues to be so. And that is why the constitution in that article that I referred to prohibits political parties from being formed or promoted on ethnic basis. We came close to disintegrity in 0708 because of that negative ethnicity. And without going into too many details, let me mention that when our forefathers were fighting for independence in this country, there was no ethnicity. They came together as a people and fought for independence. Ethnicity started in 1963, if truth must be true, because individuals wanted to mobilize their community to have support. Ethnic mobilization. What happens when you mobilize on ethnic basis? It means that you must then practice the politics of patronage. You don't give jobs to people because they deserve it. Not on merit, it's because they are loyal to you. To turn a blind eye to this ethnic mobilization really is to collude in a potentially explosive situation as we approach the next election. 